and Brad, the two most famous physical therapists on the internet. Hi, folks. Brad Heineck, physical therapist. I'm Chris, the pharmacist. Bob's not here today, but we've got Chris instead, and we're very happy to have him here to uh, help us out with this video and give us some real expert advice. Osteoporosis or weak bones, can supplements and vegetables in your diet reverse bone loss and keep things stronger? This is science-based. Chris has got a lot of recent research on this, but before we go, far, go any farther, we need to do our typical introductory. I'll do my best without Bob. This is his part. Bring it up, Chris. All right, here you go. All right. So go to our website, bobandbrad.com. And yes, we are doing a giveaway. Oh, yes. Sorry about that. We're going to, we don't know what the giveaway is because it's a future video, but it will be something very exciting and you will like it. Also go to Facebook. Uh, Bob and Brad, and if you go pin it, to, it's pinned to the top of the page, Twitter, uh, TikTok, as well as Instagram. We've got it all in digital media, social media. Let's get on with the topic. All right. So osteoporosis, Chris. Uh, I think a lot of people hear the term, really don't know what it's about. It can be a little scary. Uh, so let's just talk about osteoporosis or weak bones. Uh, who has it and what is it? Yeah, well, it's brittle bones and it's something that's going to affect pretty much most of us. I mean, 80% of women and about one in four men. So as between the ages of 50 and 70, 50 for women, 70 for men. So why, why do the women have so much... It's so prevalent in that. A couple of different reasons, probably, at least what we think. Uh, hormonal changes brought on by menopause is probably one of the bigger ones. Your genetics may have okay. some driving force in that as well. So the, the hormonal, I mean, their hormones are clearly different than, than men yep, there for are, this factor. Yep, there are female hormones, specifically estrogen, and male hormones, specifically testosterone. And each of those hormones seems to be the driving factor in both cases. Okay. So women, uh, roughly around the age of 50, that hormone level drops off, and that's when you start to see the bigger bone loss. So, I mean, up to even 2.5% per year for like 5 to 10 years after menopause. So you can lose up to 25% of your bone mass right after menopause as a woman, and as you know, about 65 to 70 for men, when that testosterone level starts to drop off, you're going to start to see that osteoporosis, osteopenia step in. And the big issue with bone loss or osteoporosis, there's really no symptoms. I mean, it doesn't get you unhealthy. It just creates weak bones so that if you do fall, you will get a, a fracture and possibly your hip, your wrist, your back, or your spine. Exactly. Without and actually, it, once it gets so bad, you can fracture one of your vertebrae simply by leaning forward to tie your shoe. It compresses when you do that. The bones compress. And now I don't mean to scare people because this can happen. It does happen, but not very often. It's typically from a fall. Say you fall down, land on your bottom side, you get a big impact. You know, you could break your uh, pelvis or your pelvis, possibly your hip. But even your spine, when you get a compression fracture in that vertebra, th that's very painful. Oh, yes. And it takes a number of weeks. And I've had people with compression fractures, you know, a couple months. Uh, it's not comfortable. It's hard to move around. We want to avoid these compression fractures, these bone fractures, uh, f as a result of osteoporosis. A lot of people do not want to deal with, uh, they think, well, geez, I've got to get on medications uh, isn't there something else I can take or things I can do? And that's what we're going to answer here. Go yeah. ahead, Chris. All right. Well, yeah, kind of the key is prevention. So basically we want to eat well. We want to have some exercise in there. We want that weight bearing exercise. Now you're talking my language. Yeah, you bet. Exercise and, and you know, Exercise uh, with bone in regards to bone loss, it's not just any exercise. Like uh, a good example, Chris and I are avid swimmers. I promote swimming to all my patients if they have a pool available and they're interested. But swimming is not going to help bone loss. We need weight-bearing exercises yep, or betcha. a resistance like a, uh, lifting weights or even resistance bands, something that puts stress on the bones. A little impact like walking is going to help those bones, the legs, the femurs, the hips, and the back. Uh, the body reacts to the stimulus of that impact, and it forms osteoclast, bone formation, density, uh, 
whether it reverses or improves, the, the, is that completely I, understood? I think you can. Yeah, I mean, I don't think it's fully understood, but I think it's it's very realistic to say you can reverse it because let's say you know after let's say we'll just take a menopausal woman and they've lost 25% of their bone mass. So sure. we'll make them 55, 60 years old now. They come in and see you because they've you know, fractured a wrist and they want to get some motion back in their hand. Let's say, what can you do? What can I do in the future to prevent this? Well, we want to make sure that we're eating well. We want to make sure that we're doing some weight-bearing exercises sure. to try and stimulate new bone formation. But the things that we can do to prevent it are to eat well. So you're going to want to use, you know, so ideally we're going to want to get it through our food. The best way to get calcium is through your diet. Okay. Secondarily, that's going to be using vitamin supplements. Sure. And then, of course, you know, so within those supplements, we can certainly talk about those separate okay. ingredients. So l let's go on to that. Uh, exercise, if you, if you Google Bob and Brad osteoporosis exercises, we have two or three videos just on that. So I'll let you go on to there. Let's take advantage of Chris's expertise here. And let's talk about uh, calcium. Now, a lot of people think calcium is like the go-to uh, diet supplement for bone loss. Yep. I think osteoporosis. Yeah. And I mean, that's the one that's driving the bus. So we'll use that phrase again. And so calcium is critical. Cal I mean, so a glass of milk, cup of yogurt. I mean, uh, but you can talk about things that aren't necessarily animal-based. So you can look at spinach, Brussels sprouts. So Vegetables, vegetables in general, and specifically the green leafy vegetables. Ah. But you can also get it in nuts, so almonds, and you know, I mean, so you, there's, it's got a variety of different things that you can extract calcium from. Okay. So if it comes out of the ground, it's a mineral. It's pulling it out of the ground. You're gonna eat it. You're gonna get calcium. Ah. Mm -hmm. So and there's a lot of things within those plants that they call phytonutrients. So they're kind of other nutrients that are in these plants. Not that help. like Phyto the dog. No, not like no. Totally <laughs> different. Totally different story <laughs> altogether. But what those nutrients do in balance, and we'll talk about vitamin D and probably some vitamin K, okay. those help to make sure that the calcium that you eat through your diet or through a supplement help to drive their way into your bones to keep them strong and hard. So it's, uh, what's the term I'm thinking of? It just assists the body absorb the yeah, calcium. Yeah, exactly. It's going to help you, your cells. And, you know, your bone is a living substance. It's not a rock, like something really hard. It's, it's, it's flexible. It's pliable. It's building up. It's breaking down. And it, the cells that make the bone require calcium and actually the things that help to make the calcium get into those bones to drive the bus, things like vitamin D and vitamin K specifically. Yep. It's kind of both are interesting substances. Uh, vitamin D, interestingly enough, just standing outside in the sunshine gives you all the D you need if 10 to 15 minutes a day, provided you don't have skin cancer risks and provided you don't have you know any other skin issues that sure. dermatologists would be upset sure. about. But 15 minutes of control of the substance will give you 49 days worth of vitamin D and it stores up in your fat cells, believe it or not. Oh, so, so if we eat a lot of green veggies, nuts, would, is it still a good idea to take vitamin K or vitamin D as a supplement to make sure that C is getting into the bones? Yeah, or? D for sure, and K is interesting. Vitamin K, you have to be very careful. And again, we're going to use the phrase, check with your doctor. Uh, people that are on the blood thinner, specifically warfarin, um, vitamin K is its antidote. So if you take too much Coumadin or warfarin, which is that special blood thinner, uh, it, vitamin K is what reverses that process. So vitamin K in plant sources, there's K1 and K2. Your plant sources give you the K1, okay. and your meat and fermented sources, like cheeses, give you your K2. So they're both kind of, even though they're fat-soluble vitamins, they're both a little bit different. So we have to be super careful. And doctors will put you on, a, if you're on the blood thinner, will put you on maybe a low dose of K and maybe you'll use a supplement to get consistency or they're going to tell you to eat the same amount of K-containing nutrients okay. every day. So if you have a healthy person that is not in any meds, then K or D, then there's Nope, at no, that point, no, no, you're fine and you shouldn't be creating any issues from that standpoint. Okay. Okay. So, yep. So anytime you're taking some other medications, you have to be careful with even... These vitamins. Absolutely. You want to check with your pharmacist or your doctor, more importantly, your doctor, because they're the ones that are taking care of you. But you can always ask your friendly pharmacist, and we'll <laughs> certainly be able to help you out as sure, much as we can. Sure. Uh, you, so, so vitamin K, there's red flag that are associated with the blood thinners. Uh, any vitamin D issues? Just taking too much. And the studies that I was looking at, and I actually looked at a lot of them, vitamin D is pretty fascinating, but it seems like there's a sweet spot. So it seems to be, if you want to break it down to a daily dose, it seems to be anywhere from 600 to 1,000 IUs, depending upon the study that you read. So wait, now that is something. If, if That's you, how they measure it. And if you take a supplement in a bottle of vitamin D, it'll tell you. 
IEUs on there. Yeah, okay. and it's interesting because they're kind of making some changes with vitamin D supplements itself. They're using IUs, which is kind of the older one, but they're now kind of translating it to micrograms too. So for oh. instance, a vitamin supplement that's 1,000 IUs of vitamin D3 is 25 micrograms of vitamin D3. So just check your labels. And if it's confusing, and it is for many, just walk into your pharmacy. They'll be able to help you out. So the average person, if you get vitamin D at 1,000 IUs, that's probably a good sweet spot I for think, most people. I think so, because the studies are showing that too much actually may have a reversing effect and actually contribute to more brittleness of bones. Ah. So with some interesting studies that, that they showed. They have that's pretty recent. Very recent. Actually, a okay. meta-analysis actually from 2017. So oh. it was actually in an NIH, so National Institutes of Health. So to be safe, if you're at that 1,000 IU dose, uh, you're doing good. If you want to uh, get vitamin D, again, you said if you're out in the sun, you're yep. probably getting all you need. Yep. Is that accurate? Yeah. Well, yeah. And again, you know, it's, uh, bodies are really fascinating. They actually have almost like a turnoff switch. So after about 15 minutes, you can stay outside all day, but hopefully you're putting on the sunscreen at that point. Um, but what happens is it actually just kind of turns it off. And the excess D, D that you make is absorbed into your fat cells. So it's a, it's a fat soluble For a cloudy vitamin. day. For a cloudy day. Really? Exactly. Yep. I like this. Yeah. So it's not so bad. Okay. So, you know, like I said, if you're outside for 15 minutes, you get about 49 days worth of vitamin D. So let me kind of put all this in. I'm one of those people, I, I, I don't want to take uh, the pills, although the vitamin K and the vitamin D, I'm thinking, okay, calcium, we can take that in a pill form too. Yes. Um, so if I drink my milk, eat a lot of vitamins or veggies, green, leafy vegetables, some nuts, um, and exercise with some impact exercise. I'm really putting myself in that direction to maintain healthy bones. Absolutely, or even sometimes reverse it. But you know, everything that we do has limits. Sure. And so with calcium, it's going to be about when you're 18 to about 50 for females, it's going to be a thousand milligrams, and and to men, it's going to be about 18 to 70. It's a thousand milligrams. Or if you're 70 on up, then you're taking about 1,200 milligrams of calcium. So when you look at the bottle, you want to look at the calcium rating. It'll just tell you how sure. many milligrams are in there. Because even if you're getting it through your diet, it can be too much. And the other interesting thing about calcium, you can only absorb so much at a time. So 500 milligrams seems to be that number. So when you're looking for don't take any more than 500 milligrams, because here's the weird thing. You only absorb about 40% of it. From ah. a, so you're not getting as much as it actually says. You mean in the pill form? In the pill form. Okay. And even to a degree in your diet, but mm -hmm. it's 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 mostly pill form because most of the substances are calcium carbonate, mm -hmm. and they take they need your stomach acid to drive that into your system to okay. absorb properly. Now let's look at this on the uh, flip side. In order to make your bone more healthy, let's say you're t you're getting your vegetables, your your nuts, or you're taking everything that you we talked about. You're getting your exercise. Are there some other diet or habits that can actually reverse it. I'm thinking like maybe uh, caffeine, alcohol, those types of things. Well, none of those are going to help. A lot of people think they're fun, but the problem <laughs> is, is that <laughs> the problem with cal uh, specifically alcohol, um, what, what's recommended basically is no more than two drinks a day. Mm -hmm. So I think that's pretty conservative, especially being from Wisconsin. Well, they're, uh, they get pretty big drinks. Of <laughs> yeah, that's true. We're talking, you know, four ounces of wine, 12 ounces of beer, okay. or one, sh sure. one ounce shot. That would be kind of the standard so measure for everything. One per day. Yeah, up, up to a max of two. Um, smoking, actually, interesting, is another one that actually is a lifestyle habit. It can be really rough. Well, that, that's for your lungs, but what does it got to do with this? Believe it or not, and they don't fully understand the mechanism, but it seems to have a risk with causing osteoporosis or speeding up bone loss. Yeah. So it's something, again... We all know smoking's bad. We've known it for a number of years, but it's just another reason why we should sure, probably try and sure. kick the habit. Right, right. Uh, was there anything else in that? I thought there was another thing I was looking at. Uh, the alcohol, uh, caffeine? Caffeine. Coffee? Yeah, coffee, I mean, to a degree, some of it is okay, but too much is bad. So, I mean, about a cup or two a day is going to be the max. Always, again, sure. kind of tough on the absorption of calcium. Right. And I, I see some of those cups in the convenience stores are... They're you got the little ones, and you got the you got the bladder buster, <laughs> and and that one's pretty tough too. So yeah, again, we'd probably want to stick to about eight ounces of caffeine right, or right. coffee. Uh, yeah, it's always the 
But it's different. The reasonable yeah. size. Well, that's the thing is, you know, you can go and buy a Frappuccino or you can buy a, the Belly Buster. So it's it's always <laughs> tough. But it'll certainly be rocket fuel. Good. Well, I, I think I got some excellent information here for those people who want to really stick to uh, diet, vegetables, all those things that you can just yep. keep healthy with and, yep. and not Eggs, have to meats, go to the Jesus. doctor. Yep. Right. They're exactly. all in there. Uh, there is one thing that I think all these things are may not going to help. But Bob and I are working on this. We can fix anything except for a broken heart. Broken heart. But I don't think this is going to hurt. No, it's I definitely not going to yeah, hurt. I think, I think it's, it's going to help. Yeah. It's uh, one of those. Well, anyways, we, we, we'll carry on this discussion after Liz turns it off. All right. Bye. <laughs>